is the anchor verse. James chapter one, verse 22, it's on the screens. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. That's pretty loaded, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Pastor Jackie last weekend brought the word. Come on, can we give it up for... If you missed that message, you should go back to our YouTube channel or like Hope On Demand. Check out the archive messages. But Pastor Jackie, she's a teacher, y'all. Like I'm like, teach, teach it. She was great. I'm a preacher. These are speakers. So I need, as a preacher, I need y'all to be like, that's good, white boy. That's fine. You can yell that. Or I like that jacket. Do they make it in men's? That's fine too. But I need some crap participation. But can we make some noise for Pastor Jackie for bringing the word last week? But she said something. It was a takeaway, a sticky statement. It said this, real revelation happens when you take a step closer. So the closer you get to Jesus, even if it's a little bit of a step, the closer you get to Jesus, that's where real revelation knowledge is unlocked. And she told a story. It's so funny. I remember our, we had three at the time and we were at the grocery store and our kids were frozen. They were just staring at the Ortega. It's not Ortega, Ortega. Some of y'all are like, it's Ortega. Don't call it Ortegas. Ortega. Taco shells were in a box. And the kids were frozen. They were staring at the box. And, and even Jackie and I were like, what is the deal? We thought someone, this is pre-AI's dominance. We thought somebody has taken your photo and Ortega needs to give us some royalty checks because they have stolen your entire look. It was, I thought it was her. We thought it was her. But we had to get a little closer. We got a little closer. Y'all, it was Reba McIntyre. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't Pastor Jack. It was, it was Reba. And even my kids were like, who is that? And I was like, it's mommy. Anyways, <laughs> but we didn't have revelation until we took a step closer. And so this weekend and all throughout this series, our prayer is that you've grabbed a hold of the teachings of Jesus. Because some things can be taught. Other things have to be caught. I pray that you've not only been taught, but you've also caught that his word is active and alive. And we've unpacked throughout this series and all throughout this year that when you really take a step closer and apply the word of God in your life, here's what happens. Uh, you'll start noticing that it changes the way you walk. It changes the way you talk and it'll change the way you act. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, this is what the word does. It changes the way you walk. Look at the person next to the other, your option, look him right in the eyes. It's weird. Say, it'll change the way you talk and it'll change the way you act. Come on, let's pray. God, I thank you today for the power of your spirit. We need it more than ever. There's so many things, I pray this on the weekly, that are contending for our attention as we dive into week four of the parables. And the parables, as ancient as they may be, still have so much power and they are still relevant today. So God, we receive your word today. The deposit, we want to leave better than when we came in. If you receive that, shout amen. I'm going to step on somebody's toes right at the very top because we're talking about taking a step closer for a moment. You can't say that God has been silent if your Bible has stayed closed. Because so many times we're like, I just don't know what it is. I just, I haven't heard his voice. It's like, girl, open the Bible. Get off of social and all the things that are contending for your attention because the Holy Spirit is always speaking. You just have to disconnect from all the things that are keeping you disconnected. That was worth you showing up today. Open up the Bible. Open it up. All right, so here's week four of the parables. This is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the parable of the wise and foolish builders, other, uh, also known as house on the rock, the wise and the foolish builders. Now, I've referenced this verse before, but I felt like throughout this series, it would be fitting to unpack it a little bit more. Jesus spoke this parable on the Sermon of the Mount, which was recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, but he also spoke it on the Sermon at the Plain, which was recorded in the book of Luke, chapter six, for all you Bible nerds. You're like, I need to know. Okay, great. So I've referenced this verse before, but again, there's so much power in this, and we're gonna be talking about our foundation. Everybody say foundation. foundation. Our foundation. Can you just stomp on the floor for a minute? The foundation, because this building, your home, the place you work, that coffee shop you may be watching from, the foundation is everything. Because we see the walls, we see the ceiling, we're grateful that it's strong enough to hold all this stuff. 
but it's only as strong as the foundation it's been built upon. The same is true in our lives, in the spirit. Our lives are only as strong and firm and fitted with everything that God has for us and the access we have access to. But if our foundation is, is messy, if our foundation is failing, then you'll start noticing a domino effect in your life. The parable of the wise and foolish builders. We talk a lot about this and there's some repetition to this on purpose because listen, if you get your foundation right, everything else falls into place. Yeah, my, my marriage is right. Get your foundation right. Uh, my kids, get your foundation right. Uh, the th get your, say, everybody say, get your foundation right. Get your foundation right. Here it is, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Therefore, Jesus' words, this is the parable. He's speaking this at the Sermon on the Mount. Thousands of people are listening. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. I love that part. You hear it, but you have to be a doer of the word. Is like a wise man. Say wise man. Now, by the way, this is humanity, so it's, it includes you ladies. Come on, wise man, who built his house, say it out loud, on the, on the rock. What happened? The rain came, the streams rose, the wind blew, it beat against the house, yet it did not fall. Why? Because its foundation was on the rock. Now, verse 26 starts identical to the very beginning. It says, but everyone who hears these words of mine, okay, Jesus, and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man. Oh, but the person next to you said, don't be like that guy. Don't be like that. Who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, just like the other one, but it fell with a great crash. If you're taking down notes, write this down. A proper foundation is not optional. It is essential. This is not, you can't opt out of this. No, no, a proper foundation, a firm foundation is not optional. We're about to celebrate 20 years of marriage together next month. Well, in like 11 days. 11 days. 20 years. That, this whole thing would have fallen apart if it didn't have the right foundation. And I know that not only just because uh, statistically, our, both our families, amen, uh, there's been a journey, amen. 20 years, it's because it's been built on the rock. And Jesus, in this parable, he gave us two options. He didn't give us 35 different options. He gave us two options. You can build your house. It's your choice. You can build it on the sand or you can build it on the rock. And right now, these two options is how our life is functioning on the daily. You're either building your house on the sand or you build it on the rock. Come on, somebody say, I need to build it on the rock. Now, I'm going to say this with boldness, but also a lot of love in my heart. Uh, my family loves Galveston. I'm just going to say it. I do. I was in Kansas City last week preaching. Pastor Jackie held it down here, and they were like, man, y'all have the ocean. I was like, hey, you can call it that. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to say that, that's fine. Yeah, it is the ocean. There's fresh seafood. You know, they rinse the oil off and stuff, but, and sometimes when you're swimming, you come up out of the water and you're like, is that a license plate on my back? Like, what is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> so we're on the sand and uh, we do like Galveston. Y'all listen, you can hate on it, but we're just, there are people all over the nation that drive 10, 12 hours to go to the ocean. Y'all can be there in about an hour or so. And, uh, and then you make it a weird rush. It's cool. You know what I mean? Like you can, Amen. So anyways, we're there with our littles. So Daphne is eight and uh, Foxman is five. And we were there and uh, they were like, dad, can we build a house? And I was like, where H have you guys ever watched on YouTube? Th those guys, I think it's in like the Philippines. They dig up the dirt and they mix it and they go, they go grab like a, if you haven't done this yet, it's going to take you further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. I promise. But they find like a termite hill and they mix it up and it, it acts like concrete and they build like a four bedroom house from mud. It's unreal. We, we like, we, we watch it and we, it's fun. So the kids are like, daddy, can, can we, can we build a house right here? Like the guys on YouTube. And I'm like, ah, like we could do like a sand castle because we all know in the natural, what happens if we built it on 
sand. Well, the tide would come through and it eventually would crumble and fall apart. It's self-explanatory. Like none of us are like, oh yeah, I built right directly on the sand and it's still standing today. No, no, no. It would fall apart. This parable that Jesus shared shows us the parallel of what we know what it is in the natural, but what it looks like spiritually. The foundation he's describing is our personal relationship with him. Everything has to be centered around Jesus. Does that old song, Jesus be the center of it all? That song, Jesus be the center of it all. Because if you're trying to build your life on anything else, it will crumble and eventually fall apart. Because outside of his presence, it is sand. Outside of his presence, listen, I've said it for years. He'll never give you a life where he's not necessary. It has to be built on the rock. It has to be built on his word. It has to be built on daily communion with him. Or you're just building your life on Galveston Beach. Amen. Both these houses, again, the scriptures sounded the same. They sounded and looked pretty good. The only difference was the foundation. Hear this. The longevity is not in the house. The longevity is in the foundation upon which the house has been built. Now, I love, I don't preach typically out of the message translation, but I love this parable read out of the message translation in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, again through 27. It says this, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. No, they're foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter who built his house on a solid rock. Rain poured, river flooded, a tornado hit. But nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you use these words in Bible studies and don't really work them into your life, you're like a foolish carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach, Galveston. And when the storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. So let me ask you this loaded question. What is your life, your marriage, your family, your house, your future, your dreams, your legacy, what does it build upon? David said in Psalms 18, and David wrote from a a sonship perspective, so he understood the importance of foundation. And this entire verse I'm about to read was from a God, I'm desperate for you sort of perspective. I just woke up a Methodist. Amen. You were like, good Lord. He's up there yelling in his camo. Sorry, she's going to yell at me later. All right, Psalms 18, 2. David, sonship, rock. He references the word rock two times in this verse. Two times. He says, the Lord is my, my rock. He's my fortress and my Savior. My God is my, say it again, in whom I find protection. He's my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I'm living proof of his keeping power. Statistically, the way I was brought up, the hand I was dealt, the only reason I'm still standing through storms, obstacles, and brokenness is my foundation. And I have chosen, and Pastor Jackie and I, the past 20 years, have chosen to have a rock under our feet. Come on, a true foundation. And this is the beautiful thing about his grace and his mercy. Maybe you've been building it on sand. Today's a great day to start building your life on the rock. Today's a great day to build your marriage and your future marriage on the rock. You don't understand. My kids are wild and acting out. Today's a great day to, to, come on somebody. Today's a great day to build your life on the rock. It's a great day. I'm preaching better than you're responding. So our first step, for those of you who maybe are new to the faith, or maybe you've been serving the Lord for 130 years, our first step is a firm foundation through salvation. That is the foundational step. That is the very first step. It's not to join the church. We don't have like membership here, but it's not like go through HC Connect and start serving. And you're like, what's next? Well, your foundational step is you got to be in a relationship with Jesus. Not a religious ritual. Religion kills relationship. No, no, no. This is a relationship with a real God who really likes you and not only really likes you, but really loves you. So our first step is a foundation through salvation. And I'll give you an opportunity at the end of the service if you don't know him, but maybe you did once know him and you're like, I, I, <laughs> I used to uh, have my life built on the rock, but I, I, I kind of strayed away. 
and now it's been all sand from here and I want to rededicate my life, I'll give you an opportunity as well. And then the next step beyond salvation, here's the next foundational step, is the public profession of your faith through water baptism. And today, Pastor Andy mentioned it, today is Baptism Sunday. Come on, somebody should shout a little bit better than that. This is Baptism Sunday. And we don't just put it on the calendar. This is not something we do for ritual or symbolic. No, there's a supernatural exchange of going from brokenness into the water and up out of the water through breakthrough. Jesus himself, water baptized by John the Baptist. Today is Baptism Sunday. And after every service across every campus, including the night of worship, you can be water baptized. And yo, we take all the guesswork out of it for you. We have shorts for you. We have a shirt for you, flippity flops. We got hair stuff, hair dryers, flat irons, everything you need to get the chilies and still look good. Amen. It was a lie. There was a rumor going around that Chili's was closing. It was upwards of nine people mad about it, <laughs> including a really close friend of mine. And I sent him, I was like, bro, they disproved it. Chili's is very open and alive. <laughs> this has nothing to do with my sermon, but if Chili's chips and salsa are wrong, I don't want to be right. Anybody, anybody like those weight, like wafer thin chips? could use them for communion. Amen. <laughs> Chili's, you just got a plug. Send us an offering. Amen. Hey, but I'm excited about this. This is a big deal. I'm diverting because I, I don't want to cry. Our eight-year-old Daphne is getting water baptized tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. And Pastor Jack and I are actually going to be uh, baptizing her tonight after the worship night. So, so exciting. So if you want to take your next step in your public profession of your faith, that's a, that's a foundational step. Can we make noise across every campus for everybody who's going to be water baptized today? So we know what happens in the natural. We live in Houston. For those of you who be watching from around the nation of the world, we, we get something here called a hurricane or two, uh, or at least tropical storms or those type of winds. And we know what it looks like in the natural that if something isn't secured during a storm like that, it blows away. So contractors in Texas, majority of builders are required to put hurricane clips or hurricane straps in place. And I confirmed that a builder in between last service was like, you are absolutely accurate. I said, good. <laughs> All right, amen. But it anchors everything to the foundation. So in the event of a hurricane, a tropical storm, strong winds, the house stands strong. We had a guy come by the house and I was talking to him and he said, man, my mom, he, he, he liked our kitchen. And he said, man, my mom just did uh, a full remodel. She retired and was like, I'm going to, I'm going to remodel our kitchen. And he said, I said, mom, the contractor is very important. And his mom said, oh, they're all the same. That's what she said. They're all the same. And if, you've never, if you've never worked with a contractor who took your money and didn't show back up, amen. But there's a lot of great contractors. Praise God. Give it up for the good contractors. Amen. So, so he builds this, this beautiful kitchen. I mean, like he said, it was incredible. He said, my mom walked in and said, oh. they were like, are you okay? She's like, I just took my breath. It's that beautiful. He said, we went and had Thanksgiving. It was a great night. And then we went back around Christmas time. And he said, I'm not even playing. He said, I laid my water bottle on the counter and it started to roll. And he said, I was like, so he said, I went and got a level and put it. And he said, it, the kitchen was literally like falling. And he said, they had built a brand new foundation. They busted out the wall. They built a brand new kitchen addition on in the river. And he said, the foundation was failing. And he said, and then we started noticing the domino effect of the foundation failing. The wall started cracking. The ceiling was cracking. The countertop, everything was starting to lean. And he said, we had to jump through a ton of hoops to fix the foundation because the foundation was failing. But here's the truth. He said, it, was, it took time. Because he said, for a long time, it seemed like it was going to be okay. But after about six months, we realized, no, this, this thing is about to fall down the hill. So my question for you is, how's your foundation? How's your foundation? How is your foundation? What are you building your life upon? Because if it's not on Jesus, if it's not on the firm foundation, then every single day of your life, you won't, you won't feel secure. There won't be the boldness and the confidence of God. So when life 
and storms. In John 16, 33, Jesus said, you're going to go through some things. When you go through some things and the diagnosis is read and the layoff comes and there's a situation that shakes you, if it's not on the foundation, you will be blown around. You will feel shaken. So let me talk for a moment because we talked about the importance of Jesus. We talked about the importance, and that's where we're landing today, that everything is built on the rock. But I want to talk a moment about another foundation that looks more like sand, where Jesus in this parable called someone who operates on a sandy foundation as a foolish person, which we've established we don't want to be like that. But there's another foundation I want to just address for a moment because I almost, almost, I almost went to the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisees. So the Pharisee and the tax collector of that parable, Jesus talked about how it's really easy to judge, condemn, talk about other people's flaws and their issues. And it says, hey, you're talking about somebody's splinter in their eye, but you've got a plank in your own eye. Now, really quickly, he was not talking about real splinters. He was saying it's real easy to get caught, caught up like, ooh, <laughs> did you see the way she's living? But you yourself are hiding and compartmentalizing your struggles. I almost went there. Because there's a sandy foundation called gossip. I'm just going to let it sit. Because you know the word gossip, the definition of gossip is when you go around and you talk to somebody else and they don't have the power to change it. Go around and talk about your boss. Go around and talk about leadership in your life. Get on, uh, I call it cowards behind keyboards. Get on social media and start commenting. Get on Reddit anonymously and saying stuff. And you start just talking to talk and you're building your life on the foundation that's sandy and it looks like griping. And you're sowing these type of seeds. And let me tell you something. There's no integrity or character in that type of foundation. And when the winds blow, that type of foundation falls apart. I've seen this over and over and over. And I've even been subject to I think, you know, operating in that at one point in my life, but we've gotten to the point where we're like, you know what? If God's going to bless us, you can't stop his blessings, but you can block them. And if you're building your life on the foundation of sand and you're building your life on the foundation of gossip, I talked to somebody in between services and she was like, you need to talk to her. She probably has sand in her shoes. She's a gossiper. I'm like, easy, <laughs> easy. And you, my friend, are gossiping now. Hey, okay. <laughs> There's nowhere in the Word. Nowhere. You can DM me on this. Send it to Chris at ChrisTomlin.com. <laughs> Toby Matt. Send it to my friend Toby Nwigway. Actually, he'll love that. There's nowhere in the Word where the Holy Spirit has empowered someone to plot or slander someone else to cause their downfall so that you can get ahead. If you got promoted because you talked bad about somebody else, oof, you build it on sand. And this is a great day to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I want to build my life on the rock. And you may even need to go back and make that, make that right. I'm going to move on. But I do feel something on that cowards behind keyboards. I think I'm going to preach that later on. All right, here's the truth. When we talk bad about others, we sow seeds. And whatever seed you sow today, good or bad, you will live in the harvest of tomorrow. How many of you guys have ever seen that happen? Good or bad, whatever seeds you sow, nine of you. Praise God. I'm going to baptize everybody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do one tank just for liars. Amen. <laughs> I'm on one. I'm sorry. They even put a fan up here today. I said to Josh last week, I said, man, I need some sort of fan. I'm sweating up. I'm hot. I said, do we have any fans? And he goes, Pastor Daniel, we don't call them fans. They're church members. We don't call them fans. It's a dad joke. He's not even a, a dad. And I said, no, no, no. I mean, like, I need something like, like a fan that's like blowing air on me. He's like, that's words of affirmation. You don't need that to be a good leader. I'm like, you're missing it. I need literally just a handheld. And I call this my Tasha Cobbs fam. Tasha always has one of these. She's just like, all right, moving on. Watch this. When you treat people right, this is huge. This was worth you showing up today or tuning in. When you treat people right, God will take care of you and everything attached to you. Come on, somebody shout. That's good. Come on. When you treat people right, when you handle people right, that's good. All right, back to the rock of our salvation because some of y'all felt convicted. What are you building your life on? Because if it's not Jesus, you will never feel fully secure because, again, storms are no respecters of anybody. They come crashing in on the saved and unsaved. The Bible says the just and the unjust. That's why things happen to all 
of us because we live in a fallen, we live in a fallen world. So if you're fasting and you're praying and you're reading your Bible so that storms won't come, you have it all wrong. You build your house on the rock, not to avoid the storm, but to endure and stand firm on the foundation of Jesus in the midst of the storm. Cause we all deal with, we all deal with storms. So when the enemy comes to rattle you with all the forces of hell and all the deception and the lies and the shutters are rattling on that house and the rain is beating down. Remember there is a God. Oh, there's a God who will keep you safe. There's a God who is fighting for you. And the one standing for you will always be stronger than the one who's been standing against you. Come on, it's good news. So when the doctor says, give up, give up hope, there's no way out. You can stand firm. When your money is funny and you're struggling and trying to figure out how to make it to the next paycheck, the, the, the Spirit of God is standing with you, so stand firm and recognize that He is right there with you. I, I fell back in love with a verse this week. David, who again had sonship, uh, I, as I'm reading through the Word, there's a verse that I went back to, I gravitated back towards this week, and it's the strong tower, Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Just say his name. Just say Jesus. Because Jesus will always be bigger than the name of brokenness. Jesus will be always be bigger than the name of shame. Jesus will always be bigger than the name of cancer and heart disease and struggle and brokenness. The name of the Lord. Say his name again. Say Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And then it says this. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. So every time you call on his name, Jesus, every time you worship him, every time you read his word, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous person runs into it and is safe. And this is where real transformation happens. This is where real transformation happens in your life under the covering and the protection of Jesus as your firm foundation. It says this in John 15, 4. Are y'all getting anything out of this? It says this in John 15. Some of y'all are like, I'd rather Jackie speak. You go back to singing. <gasps> I got a DM about that. It hurt. It said, she's a phenomenal speaker. You should go back to singing. And I'm like, huh. And then I was like, mom, that's me. And you can just text me that. All right. <laughs> John 15, 4. It was your mom, actually. All right. Stay joined to me, and I will stay joined to you. This is the word. Just as a branch cannot produce fruit, Unless it stays joined to the vine, you cannot produce fruit unless you stay joined or connected to me. See, when you stay connected to him, I love this part, you'll start looking more like Jesus. You, you, you won't look like, and people will be like, Some, something's different about you. You've got a different posture of peace about you. you, 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 you start, you're not complaining. You're not as sarcastic. You start walking in your position instead of your condition. You start walking in joy and you've got more hope. You start walking in rooms with confidence because you started looking more like Jesus, but that only happens when you stay connected to him. And this is what ends up happening. And this is going to help somebody. It helped me just preaching it earlier. The more you stay connected to him, the more you start looking like the fruit of the spirit. This is what the Bible says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love. It's joy. Come on, everybody smile. That's not happiness. Happiness is something that you can create in your own strength. Joy is from God, and to you and through you, the joy of the Lord is your, it's your strength. So you get love, you get joy, you start looking and carrying more peace. Uh, this is the one I need. Uh, patience, come on. I was standing outside earlier. It's hot, y'all. It was hot, and Pastor Jackie was like, oh, we're going to talk to some more people. And I'm like... <laughs> And the Lord is working me with me on this patience thing because it's so hot out there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked up to me. They're like, are we back in the furnace? Like, it's hot. Patience, I need that one. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, driving in Texas, self-control. Some of y'all need that. Take a picture of that. Leave that up real quick, team. If you can put your phones out, cool, or you just know the verse because you're a seasoned saint. I want you to look at all these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We'll be in 21 days of prayer and fasting starting in August. I'm literally on the daily looking at this verse and saying, God, in this area, and I don't need to, I got the microphone, but I don't need to tell you all my stuff. 
Patient, patience is a real one. But if you need a little bit more, if you need to love, the Bible says to love your neighbor as you do yourself, but you have to receive that love and out of the overflow of the love that you've received, you need to love others, okay? So love, joy, maybe you haven't had any joy lately. Maybe it's been robbing you of your strength. God, I need more joy. God, I need peace. I, I'm wrestling with and trying to figure this out in my own strength. And this type of peace here, this fruit of the spirit peace, this connected to the vine peace is not a peace that you can find in the world. And the world can't take this type of peace away. So I need some peace. I need some patience. Come on, somebody. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What out of the fruit of the spirit do you feel depleted in? Because today, as we're talking about the foundation I want you to begin to go to the Lord in relationship and say, God, I need a little bit more of this. I need you to fix and heal this because he has good plans. Come on, if you say he has good plans, shout out loud. Amen. And some of you might even say, Pastor Daniel, I, I needed that. My love walk is, is not great right now. My, you, maybe you almost got in a fist fight in the parking lot because of traffic. <laughs> maybe it's love. Maybe you're dealing with some joy issues or peace, or maybe it's patience. Some of you may say, Pastor Daniel, like I needed this today because the truth is I'm not, I'm not great in these areas, but here's the beautiful thing about the faithfulness of God is we can grow every day. We can grow in this every day. Maybe you're here today and you would say, but pastor, my foundation feels flawed. My foundation, I, I've wondered if it can even be repaired. Maybe the story about the kitchen connected with you more than the actual word because you're like, the kitchen is falling down and it's because it was failing, I feel like my foundation might be failing a little bit. This is an amazing verse out of Proverbs 24, 16, and this speaks to sonship. This speaks to those who walk in relationship, to be in right standing, to walk as righteous. Look at this right here. For though the righteous falls seven times. Ooh, she, Pastor Jackie said last week, God's grace will cover the, he'll give you first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, greens, beans, tomatoes, tomatoes. Like, that's how good his grace is. The righteous may fall seven times, but what's it say? They rise. Ooh, somebody should shout. They rise again. They rise again. The worst thing would be to stay down. No, no, no. As we're teaching our kids to ride bikes and we're teaching our kids to, to play sports and do things they've never done before, if Fox fell down and we're like, well, good enough for you, just stay down there. No, no, the righteous may fall seven times, but it gets back up again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Again, I said it earlier, a proper foundation is not optional. It's essential to walk in right standing so when the moments of despair and brokenness try to ruin your joy and try to mess with your confidence and makes you gravitate back to the sandy soil instead of the foundation, the rock, let me encourage somebody with this. I posted this on my social a couple days ago. Don't let the enemy convince you that a bad day means you have a bad life because he's the deceiver of the brethren. Just because you've had a bad day does not mean you have a bad life. Come on, th just thank him for just a moment for the breath you're breathing that you got up again today. The righteous fall seven times, but get back up again. You've survived 100% of your worst days, and you're still standing. You've made it. Come on, you're not done yet, and he's not done with you yet. Somebody should shout amen. amen. All right, in closing today, I actually told this story back in 2021, but a friend of mine sent me a story, and, and we're, we're landing the plane. Like, landing it. This isn't like a typical preacher, like, like his fourth close, like in closing. You're like, it's been six times you've said this. A friend of mine sent me this story about this, this place, a scientific ecological system structure called the Biosphere 2 that was built in Oracle, Arizona. It looks like this. Let me throw it up. Yeah, look at this. This is wild. Looks like this. Y'all know about this? Some of you know about this? So this is wild. They, they, they were able to create what they said, the engineers, the scientists, this was the perfect facility for sustainable environment. It was a sustainable environment to grow food and plants and trees. And they were like, this is the future. Like with everything that's happening around the world, this is how we can have 
full control. It's wild even saying that because a lot of times we try to live our lives like that where we create our own environments to try to have full control instead of trusting God. Keep going. The place is fascinating though. They built a rainforest. There's a desert. They created streams. The temperature was perfect. The lighting was perfect. Everything about this place was perfect. And they were even bragging. We thought of everything. The soil, the water, temperature. It, this has been engineered to perfection. Everything is going to grow right. We can control it. It's only going to get better from here. But then they started noticing something. All the fruit trees started to droop. So they were producing fruit, but they were drooping so bad that they were literally touching the ground. And the scientists, the engineers, they were baffled. Why on earth are the fruit trees inside of our perfectly controlled environment? Why does it seem like they're failing? And then they're studying the trees on the outside of the glass that were standing strong. And they said, what is happening? What didn't we think of? The scientists, the engineers, they found out in the midst of all of their studies that they missed one important part of something we experience every day here on this earth. And it's understandable that they missed it because they couldn't see it. Maybe the effects of it, sure, but you can't taste it. You can't even capture it. So what did they miss? Because the soil and the temperature and the water and the sun, everything was perfect. The one thing they missed was the wind. They missed the tension of the wind. When the wind blows and those trees are kind of swaying. Everybody do that a little bit. Just kind of sway a little bit. Yeah, when the trees begin to sway, what we don't know is it's toughening the bark. What we don't know is it's, it's causing those trees to get stronger every day. And what it's doing is it's, it's causing those trees to reach deep into the soil with their roots. Why? So that they can have a strong foundation. Now, we dismiss the wind. We don't want to encounter the wind. But Pastor Jack and I, going on 20 years, we have rarely seen the wind pushing us forward. It's behind our backs. Like, <laughs> just push us. I don't know what that was. And you know what we've encountered? Number one, that we're better in a battle. We've, we've, we've deduced that. We've also seen that the wind's rarely ever pushing us forward. I feel like we face the wind head on, and it's making us stronger. Every day our roots are going deeper. Our foundation is getting firmer, and we're trusting in God more and more, and we can minimize challenges in life, and none of us want to have to stand up and deal with the wind, with the, with the battle that blows against us. But the very thing that the enemy has sent your direction to break you, because of the goodness and mercy of God, he'll actually shift it to shape you and mold you into who he's called you to be as a son and a daughter of the living God. And I said it earlier, but you're not alone. No. You're not alone. The one who's standing with you will always be stronger than the one who's been standing against you. Come on, somebody shout amen. So Pastor Jackie and I have decided if God's going to bring us to it, then he's obviously going to bring us through it. And if he's brought us to it, then and we, we're going to have to go through it anyways, then we're going to choose to grow through it. And instead of minimizing, no, no, we decided to embrace the challenges, to stand up and face the wind head on because the wind can be, it can be invigorating. You know, sometimes it can take your breath at first, but when you lean in like those trees that stand strong and their root system is strong, they do not fail when the winds blow. And my prayer today is that we all leave here with the mindset of I'm getting stronger. I preached it for a while. I said it a moment ago, but I need you to catch it. That he'll never give you a life where he's not necessary because the wind will blow. Come on, how many of y'all have been blown around a little bit by some wind, by some storms, by some financial struggles, by a diagnosis? But the spirit of the living God, the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, as that wind is blowing and you're being, you're kind of being battered a little bit, no, no, your roots are going deeper. Come on, somebody. And getting stronger every, every single day. Would you stand to your feet? 
I want to challenge you today. Be aware of the wind. I, I, I felt that earlier today. But just be aware of the wind. Like when you go out, let the wind blow through your hair or your beard, whatever you got. Just let it blow. Now my mom, I know she's going to text me about this because as a kid, she would never let us put our hands out, like our arms out the window. Like, what if a stop sign catches your hand? I'm like, it's true. But maybe today at some point, I know it's 175 degrees out with the heat index of 400, but maybe roll down your windows right when the sun's going down and just let the wind kind of blow and do that little carving thing. You know what I mean? And maybe with boldness say, listen, wind, listen, challenges, listen, devil, everything you've tried to throw at me to break me. No, my God is using to shape me and I'm getting stronger. I'm getting bolder. I'm getting better. I'm waking up every day with confidence. I'm waking up every day with joy. I'm letting go of and redirecting everything that's trying to mess with my peace. Now, so when you can blow, but my peace is non-negotiable. Storms, you can come, but my joy is non-negotiable. And I will worship the Lord through it. I will give God praise through it because he's fought for me before. He'll fight for me again. I feel like somebody should shout. So we opened up this series with Firm Foundation. And would you lift your hands towards heaven if you're brand new to Hope City across every campus? We lift our hands like this for just a moment. This is great. This is praise. But this right here is open-handed. This is John chapter 3, verse 30. I need you to increase as I decrease. And this also says, Lord, remove anything in my life that could maybe be a distraction or maybe I've been building my life on sand. But this also... This open-handed posture also is a posture that says, I need a deposit. I want to build my life on the rock. Come on, I want to worship for just a moment. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken. Yeah. I've never been more glad. That I put my faith in Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? He won't Come on, I feel the Spirit of God in the room Say, He won't
Never has, never will, he won't. Never has, never will, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Come on, can we give him praise? Because we know that he won't fail. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they will be safe. There's, there's protection and safety under that cover. There's protection and safety on that foundation. Would you put your hands down just for a moment? I want to give just three quick opportunities today. The first is this across every campus. Pastor Daniel, with every eye closed, just for a moment. I want to just admit that I've been building my life on sand. And today, I was reminded the importance that everything in my life could be shaken if it's not built on the rock. So I made a choice today. I'm making a choice today. I'm making a, an intentional choice today to build my life, my family, my marriage, my future marriage, my parenting, my future parenting, my dreams, all of it. I'm choosing to build it on the rock. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand across every campus? I'm choosing today to go all in with Jesus to align my life, to build my life on the foundation of the rock. Okay, beautiful. You can put your hands down. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Here's the two other invitations. The first is this. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. So when I was mentioning earlier, the first step in foundation is to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. This costs you no money. This is a posture of surrender. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. It's going to write victory in your story today. And then the second invitation is this. I've known Jesus. I used to have my life fixed to the rock, but I fell away. I got caught up in the prodigal life. I've been living reckless. I've been living messy. Today, I want to realign my heart to his heart, and I want to reestablish my life on his on the rock. I want to reestablish my life on him. The wind has blown me around and my, my roots have gone deeper, but not deeper to get, to get stronger, but I've been struggling. And the truth is I want to rededicate my life today. One, I want to give my life to Jesus for the very first time. When I hit three, I want you to boldly lift up your hand if this is you. Two, I want to rededicate my life. I promise we will not embarrass you. But this is a, a public step to say, I want to give my life to Jesus or rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. I'm looking all over. I see you and you and you. I see you and you and you and you and you. And I see you and you and you. And I saw you and I see you and I see you. I saw you over there. I see you in the back. I see you in the back. I see you in the back. I see you in the middle. I saw you, my friend. I see you over there. Come on, Hope City. That's just West Houston. I see you, my friend. He won't fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't. Come on, we're all going to pray this prayer. Say it out loud, Jesus. Come on, everybody. Jesus, here's all my shame. Here's all my struggles. Here's all my issues. Here's all my failures. Just because I've had a bad day and multiple bad days does not mean I have a bad life. And I can live a victorious life, a life filled with hope, filled with freedom in relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging on the cross, for giving up your life for mine, but then getting up out of the grave on the third day so that I could live a life filled with freedom. From this moment on, I'm choosing to build my life on the rock. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. Amen. Come on, Hope City. Go wild. Come on. A bunch of people just said yes to Jesus.